and we're going to go ahead and get started. But we're going to go through a real quick program on the Conklin Agrivent system, some of the products that Conklin has available to you to uh, do two things specifically hold your income, put the cost down, and increase your yield. So uh, we go by the name Yield Champions, about half of all the NCGA national and state winners nationwide uh, past, past 15 years at least have been customers of ours, as you call or parts of our program. And so when you when you hear us referred to as Yield Champions or the company of champions, that's the, the reasoning behind it. We have a piece of rel that we call agro managed products. We have three specific product divisions. Uh, or subgroupings of products. We have full line wedding agents, compatibility agents, pH control agents, drip retardants, all the types of things you can put with herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, pesticides to make it work better. Uh, but they fall into this category. Our oldest product here is Wex, I'll talk a little bit about. We have a full line of biological products that is growing significantly. Our original one and the one that most people know us by is Amplify D and L, which I'll talk a little bit more about. That seed treatment can be used on virtually any crop other than soybeans. For soybeans, we have a product called Magnify LST, a, a liquid-applied live bacterial inoculant for soybeans. Uh, a lot of guys use that and double inoculate their soybeans, both in furrow and, and on the seed. And then we have a product we've had for many years called Excito, plant growth regulators. We have a version that goes in the furrow with the seed. We have another version that goes foliar applied. We got a couple of new product, newer products in here, actually three, but I'll talk about them a little bit. One is Sintos FA, a liquid egg sugar. The second one is Kip Color Nutrient Compass Foliar Fertilizer, a, a biological uh, plant growth regulator that we apply typically with early herbicide applications uh, and foliar applications. And then a product called Kip Color <coughs> Intensify. And Intensify is a plant growth regulator as well. It's a it's a powder product that we can add in furrow or we can put up with foliar. Uh, in our fertilizer line, I'm quick to tell people what we do not handle is dry broadcast fertilizers and hydrous liquid commodities like uh, 28 UAN solutions. But what we do handle are a line of micronutrients, uh, a product called Guardian, which is a nitrogen stabilizer for liquid nitrogen, liquid manure, and it can be cold wide with anhydrous as well. We've got a lot of guys doing that very successfully, especially back in Illinois and Iowa. And then uh, another grouping of products we've got are bulk fertilizers that are really designed for either in furrow with the seed or as a foliar applied over the top of the growing crop. So they're what I would call uh, specialty. Uh, fertilizers. They're not, uh, again, designed for broadcast applications. So our whole objective in, in, with every product we introduce, and I'm quick to tell people, we test a lot of products that you'll never see. You'll never hear about, they'll never see the light of day, because we know that if, if we're going to introduce an input to you, hey, you've got to change somebody up, something else about the way you're farming it, and unless it's going to give you a high return consistently, we're never going to screw with it. And so, uh, the two goals that we always have are, number one, to reduce your input costs on a per acre and specifically a per bushel basis uh, or per ton and an increased yield simultaneously. And we have programs and products for virtually any crop you want to you want to talk about, uh, from tobacco to uh, 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 anything, uh, beets, field peas, whatever. But the primary products we work with are corn, soybeans, wheat, and alfalfa. Those are the ones that are made up 90 of four grams. So, what do the oil field and the yield champions have in common? This has been several years ago when uh, Dave Bull has set the world record at 454. They've, he's gone way past that since then, as well as Dowdy. But this is the irrigator record. This, the dry line record is still held by Francis Childs of Manchester, Iowa. He's passed away several years ago, 2008. But he has the world record still on dry line corn at 442.14 which he used a number of our products in the process of, of achieving that. But when this article came out, when this magazine came out, Progressive Farm, which I'm sure all of you get, it's a magazine that I flipped through, and David spoke at some of our meetings, and I flipped through it, and I recognized a lot of the guys and the names that were in there. Jerry Cox and I probably done 100 meetings together, and he was in there. But I noticed as I went through it, there was a lot of guys I recognized from the NCGA competition. So I decided, I'm going to do something I've never done, I, I can admit to you guys, with a farm publication. And I decided I was going to read every single article, every single word, and I was going to try to figure out the answer to this question. What do they all do in common? These guys were all raising well over 300 bushel of corn. Some of them were 400, like Dave at the time. And here's the seven things I came up with. And, and I should make a handout of this so I don't have one. 
So here's here's the seven things. They all do a complete soil test. Maybe not on every field every year, but certainly on all their competition fields, they do soil testing so that you've got data points and you can see the changes in your soil, your pH, and other things that are critical to yield. Second thing is they all use seed treatments. Most of them in this publication were using Amplified D, our seed treatment for corn. And they use seed treatments for enhanced germination. I'm not talking about insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, you know, that are applied to the seed. I'm talking about uh, something designed to help you get better germination. And the third thing is they all use in-row starters with microbes. And, uh, and, and the efficiency that you get from going in for those kind of materials, not just the MPK, but the micros, uh, biologicals, things like our Cintos uh, sugar products, increase microbial activity in that root zone. Fourth is they all do routine tissue testing, keyword being their routine. They automatically go out where you and I, most of us, we don't, do, we don't even think about tissue testing a lot of times unless we see something that looks a little funky. And so we go out there and say, hey, we're trying to figure out what's going on. These guys are going out to fields that they've fertilized heavily, that they have yield, they've, they've fertilized for maybe three, 350, 400 bushel corn, and they want to they wanna see, okay, is there anything that's a hidden hunger that's still lacking in that tissue? And so they take tissue tests regularly because, number five, they all fold your feet. And uh, Todd was just telling me he was with an agronomist. Uh, at a seed meeting the other day, and he asked a question about foliar feeding, and the guy had this blank look on his face, just kind of like, you know, what's that, you know? But these guys all do foliar feeding, anywhere from one to three times. I know guys that feed foliar feed five times, and foliar feeding, we're not talking about <clears throat> fertigation. That's a good concept, and it's, there's a place for that. But we're talking specifically foliar feeding, especially with micronutrients, uh, uh, to get, get those, to feed that hidden hunger. Uh, number six, they all do late season nitrogen application. And the key there is that the new genetics all take a lot more nitrogen after tassel than they used to. They used to take about 25% of your nitrogen to fill that ear. Now it takes more like 40% of your nitrogen. So if you've applied nitrogen early on or last fall and you got wet weather and then a lot of it gets away from you, this is really, really key. Nitrogen stabilizers and late season nitrogen applications are really key. Number seven, is I think maybe the most important one of all, and that is these guys are always learning. In fact, uh, if you come to our Pro Ag One, which I'll mention later, which is going to be in Lincoln on Monday and Tuesday this week, coming up, you will always see NCGA national and state winners at those programs. In fact, uh, these guys, uh, a good example, Jordan and I were at a Pro Ag Two in Omaha, Nebraska, a couple three years ago here, and uh, there was uh, sitting across the aisle from Jordan was Jerry Cox who has more wins at the national level than anybody else in history, 25 national wins, he just had another one this year. Uh, he said it wasn't an exceptionally great year, yield for him, but it was good enough to win him a national award this year. Uh, next to Jerry was, was Kip Cullors, who's won several uh, uh, yield competitions and has been a three-time world record soybean grower as high as 160.6. And then next to Kip was his wife, Michelle, and in front of Michelle was a guy named Anthony Del Rocco, an NCG field winner from New York State, who flew into Omaha for that program. Uh, these guys are always learning. You always see these guys at our programs. In fact, I was with Jerry Cox, and we did a meeting down in uh, Missouri, and uh, I'm trying to remember the town. We were, we were tearing down after the meeting, and there was a next seed dealer there, and he asked Jerry a great question. He says, Jerry he says, how many times have you been to that program one? Uh, it's a basic soil agronomy program. And he said, uh, well, I said, I have to think about it. At the time, he'd been working with us and using our program for 12 years. And he says, well, at least three dozen times. So that's an average of three times a year. You know, so one of the things I stress to guys, if you really want to learn how to, and it's the most important part about of all these things, is just learning not only how to do these things, but why they do them. Uh, you really need to come to those programs. A pro ag one at least once a year is a minimum. As, uh, Conklin gives you some good educational discounts for coming to that program, but you really ought to come at least once a year. There's always a different group, and you learn as much. There's as much caught as taught out in the hall, and you're going to learn. Uh, so anyway, these are all, these seven, I think, really summarize, they're a great summar summarization of what we call the agri-managed system. Because it's not just about our products, it's about the knowledge. In fact, if you've been here and heard uh, Mike Willer, a uh, farmer from over here in Iowa talk, he's shared a couple of programs with us. And one of the things that Mike says is he says the thing he loves about working with Conklin 
is not just the products, but he says, Conklin has allowed me and shown me how to become my own agronomist. You know, because you, you rely on the people that a lot of times supply your products, and a lot of times you follow blindly, you know. And it's not intentional, but a lot of times you don't have the educational component that Conklin offers. So we always begin with soil analysis, and if you've been, to our pro if you've been around very long, you've been to one of Corey Orbelander's meetings, that tells you about why 90% of all the fertility samples that are sent into the lab are inaccurate, you know, when they go into the lab. Uh, and so the, the idea is that, number one, you or somebody you trust has to take a good, representative, quality sample, get it in the lab without contamination, and then they do the lab work. And then what we do is we come back with a specific recommendation for the materials that we're using. So because we know the material, the raw materials we're dealing with, we know the recoverability, and so forth. So one of the things that people really love about our soil test here, and it's improved even more this year, is they've got some new software. When you get your soil test on your computer and you pull it up, you can click in and you basically you can change the crop, you can change the yield goal, you can change uh, the, the fertilizer material that you're using, because the first page shows you the basics of your soil, the second page shows you the prescription for that yield goal. And you can change here if you, if it recommends through 2018, but you happen to have 8.16.11.2 in your tank, you can change that and it'll give you, a, it'll change the recommendation for the fertilizer you have on hand. And so it's a, it's a great program and it gives you a prescription of our products, but then it also tells you what else you're going to need as far as additional nitrogen and other sources of nutrients. Uh, Kip Gullers uh, has worked with us for a number of years and helped us develop some products, but one of the things that Kip does, uh, I remember introducing him several years ago to one of our top customers here in Nebraska, one of Stan's customers, in fact, who farms 18,000 acres, and, and I knew he was planting soybeans for the very first time. He's from western Nebraska, they grew garbanzos, pintos, uh, great northerns, and a lot of other beans, but they'd never, they'd never grown any soybeans at the time, and Kip says, well, I introduced him to Kip, and, he, and I said, Kip, what should he be using? First time he was ever going to grow soybeans. He says, well, he says, there's four products I use on every acre, and Kip's farm is 23,000 acres. First is Wex. He uses a quart of Wex, pre-plant, pre-emerge on every acre he plants, uh, a crop, and you do a pre-plant, pre-emerge at that cork rate. Never put on that higher rate at uh, any other time. This is one of our several products that are in the testing program with what Vex. Vex has a program called, it's a seed company from back east. I don't think they're in Nebraska That's yet, right. but we've got a bunch of them in Nebraska and Missouri, a lot of their, their dealers. They have a program called PFR, Practical Farm Research. They, they do research on farm, field size plots, around and uh, throughout a number of states. And so when they get an input or a concept that has proven itself three or four years at minimum, every year they see good results with it, they give it a sample what they call PFR approved and prove it. And that's one of Wex is one of those products that they recommend every grower use. Uh, another one is Amplify D. It also falls into that category, but it's another product that Kip uses on every acre. Amplify D is the seed treatment comes in a blue talc uh, carrier that can be seed treated. You can put it through a, 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 a talc inductor on a tender. Uh, or the Amplify L, you liquefy this powder, and that liquefied powder, then you put through a, a, a seed treater to treat your seed. We get a little bit better results with this, but just because I think you get a more uniform coverage of the seed with the liquid, but if you don't have the capability of doing that, the dry product works great. And it's what I call seed germination insurance. Here's how it works. Every seed has within it a denison monophosphate. That energy source during the Krebs cycle, during the germination process, Changes from AMP to ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and then adenosine triphosphate. This is called the Krebs cycle. That may feel, sound familiar if you ever took any biology. Uh, but the ATP is the high energy phosphorus that fuels every cell in your body, mine, and that corn plant. Well, what happens is we've dusted that seed with additional adenosine monophosphate. When it begins to draw in moisture, draws in this additional source of AMP, we've doubled or tripled the amount of energy for that seed to germinate and grow on. And that's what gives us the additional. Uh, seedling bigger, quicker plant stands, more uniform plant stands. Those marginal seeds that might not have made it through that crust you will know, make it through. And, and there's lots of things you guys spend lots and lots of money on to make sure that you get good seed placement. No doubles, no skips, those kind of things. You got your downforce system, you've got everything else. This is one little tool to help you that really doesn't cost anything. We, we, the least Jerry Cox says he's ever seen with Amplify is a two bushel yield difference. 
and he's seen as high as 12. We average somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 to 8. G uh, Corey Overlander says this is one product every single week. Every, every vaccine dealer recommends it on their seat. And again, it's a, uh, it's a proven product. They show an average of $13.50 added net, and they're figuring the product at retail prices. Um, number three product that Kip recommends is manganese. Anytime you spray glyphosate, you've got the potential for uh, a decrease in manganese uptake by the plant. And so Dr. Huber from uh, Purdue University proven, has proven that. He's also shown that if you'll add a fully chelated manganese product to that spray, it'll offset that yield drain. And uh, the, uh, the thing that we see with this product, a lot of guys are going away from glyphosate. That's fine. Or you have a combination of herbicides. The key thing here is if you'll check your soil test, a lot of our soils where we've used glyphosate for many, many years are showing really, really short in manganese. I know Todd was saying they're putting more and more manganese in furrow because of that. Um, and so we, our feast uh, ETDA, uh, EDTA chelated, 100% chelated manganese is what we use either in furrow or in foliar applications. This is from over in Indiana, Illinois on a number of soybeans from different uh, companies. You know, decent soybeans to start with, 49 to 65 bushel beans, but where they used one pint of manganese in replicated plots, they showed an average of 7.4 bushel yield response. Now, Kip Keller says this is low hanging fruit, easy to do, low cost, four bucks an acre, high response. I tell guys, forget about seven bushel. If you get two bushel, that's a really good return. Eight eight dollar beans, sixteen dollar return on a four dollar investment. I mean, it's uh, what a lot of guys would call a no brainer. Uh, and then the fourth product Kip says he uses on every acre is his super juice. Well, what he calls super juice, we call Kip Colors Nutrient Compass Foliar Fertilizer, and uh, we put a quart of it in with our early herbicide applications. It's designed as a foliar, and uh, and so that's the product that we use there. Best single set of data that we've got on this product was done in Central Nebraska with an independent third party agronomy group. And they did it in 2014 on three replications each on 32 different hybrids. They got an average of uh, anywhere from two to 27 bushel yield response on those hybrids, applying one quart of V5. And the average response across all hybrids was 12 bushel. I would tell you that that's, that's plenty high. I would tell you that in general, seven or eight is very, very common. I think that's a, a good uh, average. And this product is gonna cost you about eight bucks an acre to use in that foliar application. So there's the four products that Kip uses on every acre. And I tell guys that retail, those cost you maybe 25 bucks, uh, but the return should be at least 10 to 20 bushels. And uh, so a pretty good investment. Sintos is a new product. All of our NCG yield winners for many, many years have been using sugars in furrow in their foliar applications. The first time I ever heard about this, I was doing some meetings with Ray Rawson, who's the father of zone tillage from up in Fulham, Michigan, and he said they would get, this is this has to be 15 years ago, they would get tanker loads of liquid sugars into their farm. They put a pound on every time they went across the field up to a maximum of 10 pounds a year. Okay. So, I mean, it's been going, these guys have been doing this stuff for a long time. Well, a lot of our guys have been buying literally semi-loads of sugar from ADM and different companies, and we finally came out two years ago with Cintos FA. And what people tell me, and we've got lots of data coming in on this from Vex and others, but what we're seeing with this product is that it's an easy-to-use ag sugar that costs you maybe a buck and a quarter an acre. If you buy it right, maybe a buck uh, for a pint. And you can do it multiple times as you go across the field. Uh, we've had guys that will go to two, two pints in furrow, uh, and they're having great results. Now, Kip tells me that the fulvic acid, that's what the FA stands for, is really kind of a key ingredient in our product. They will tell you, don't buy any more than you're going to use in the spring. So get it in the spring, use it, don't leave it sit over the winter. I mean, I've had guys do that, and it works fine, but you really should you really should, they want you to get it in the spring use it in the spring and so you don't leave it set over uh, intensify is a brand new product and the best single video i've ever seen in the 45 years i've been with the condom company is the one that kip colors does that explains what this product is so i'm gonna i'm gonna let him explain to you what it is uh, it's a plant growth regulator he tells me is it's three times as concentrated as any other product in the market at half the price and, uh, and you basically, it comes in a container like this, uh, on the wrong side, grab the wrong side. Uh, the, uh, this, this container is a, it's granules that, well, if you drop this in a glass of water, it'll never hit the bottom. 
I mean, it dissolves before it hits the bottom. If you drop it into some fertilizer, you might have to pop the clutch. Uh, it, it really mixes easily. This one unit will do 50 acres uh, in furrow or in, in a foliar application. And it retails for seven bucks an acre, wholesales for four bucks an acre, and we put a two to five bushel is kind of a conservative estimate. But here's the video from the kit. So I know there's a lot of plant growth regulators out there already. You're probably already using one. A lot of the products out there just says one thing. Ours intensifies the growth. The two plant growth regulators we have is GA3 and IBA. IBA is for root development, GA3 is for above ground. So what that does is it gets that plant up out of the ground at a lot faster pace, developing more roots. That's the key to the whole deal is getting those roots down there, as many roots as possible, because that's the factory to the plant. That's what you got to feed that plant with. So the more nutrients you can extract out of the ground, the more that plant's got to go into the yield. You know, with Intensify, you should be able to see the results immediately. You don't know it's working. I try to make everything farmer friendly. The beauty part about this is you just dump it in your fertilizer tank with very little education, you're ready to go. This stuff is easy, simple, ready to use. The benefit of this is my 25 plus years researching on my farm. We research everything. So you're getting out of age, you don't have to go out there and do this yourself. This is a piggyback to all other common products. So if you're using Amplified D or Amplified L, this goes right on top of it. This is an add-on product. Cobb have been in business for 50 years, and farmer owned. I mean, they have a long history in agriculture. If you want to see more of your crops, get them up to the past car, throw it, make more yield, become a champion. I recommend getting over to your local company distributor and get the sun and trying it on your farm and sit in the Okay, so that's that plant. Here's a sample of it, I'll pass it around. Yeah, you can smell it, you can taste it, I suppose, but I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's again, those two different plant growth regulators you talked about, GA3 and gibberellic acid. One of the things that they tell you is, uh, in South America, where these products were developed in, over the last 15 years, they have a product that they call Kipsoya, and it contains all of the components of Nutrient Compass and Intensify in a liquid. Now the difference is here, if we were to put those here in a combination, the pH of that plant would be 5.5, and the DOT considers that a hazardous product, so they won't let you truck it down the road. So that's why we found, we have a chemist that's really sharp, and she found a way to put this into a, a really easy form that you can blend. So if you were putting on the Nutrient Compass, I would add this to that in that early foliar application pass as well. Uh, but it, it, you're talking a cost here of four bucks wholesale. The wholesale on the, on the Nutrient Compass is eight. Uh, and so you're looking at you know significantly higher rate, but we've seen great results. I would tell you this, I don't have anybody that's used Nutrient Compass on their farm to test that is not used on every acre today. Uh, I mean, we sell lots and lots of totes uh, of uh, Nutrient Compass. Okay, I'm going to have Justin Dahlgren come up here. I'm going to have him tell you about his farming operation. Justin was actually our, our largest volume purchaser of content hydro managed products last year. He's from Bertrand, Nebraska, and farms with his dad and brother. And I'm going to have him tell you about his operation. I'm going to walk through a few slides here. So, Justin, thanks for coming in. Thanks. All right, uh, like I said, I'm Justin Dahlgren. Uh, we're from Bertrand, Nebraska, so we're just south of the Platte River. Uh, just yeah, west of Carney, about 30 minutes. So we're right by that Holder's area. Um, I'm part of cattle feeding country, and we do it too. We have about an 8,000 head feed yard, and we run about, about well, now it would be close to 8,000 acres of farm ground. Uh, it's almost entirely irrigated. Uh, the dry land is just a pain in my ass. Um, and we also have patch, we run about uh, 2,500 to 3,000 yearlings on grass over the summertime. Um, I'll start off today, we'll talk a little bit kind of about our program. Uh, we use it all. I won't spend too much time talking about them because uh, a lot of people here can actually do a lot better job than I am. Um, one thing we are doing, we're really focusing on infero, micronutrients, and micronutrients throughout the whole system. Um, we've noticed in our farm, because we are a high manure operation, we've got a lot of, a lot of cattle, a lot of manure. I've got phosphorus that I might not get used up. I know I've got potassium that my kids will never use. Right? I've got problems. That's caused us some major micronutrient issues. 
because of that, that's what we're that's probably one of our biggest focuses that we're really trying to sit and hit hit on right now. Um, so for us, you know, Zinc's a huge product for us. Uh, but like I said, I'm not going to focus too much on that, uh, just because you can learn a, a lot better from me, and your individual operation will be different than mine. Um, the other thing we're really starting to work on is we're starting to hit um, a very big advantage with fully provided. That's something that up until two years ago we've never tried. We're starting to see huge, huge results, increasing our tissue testing and pushing growth. That, that's a big factor. Um, and then we'll finish off our um, with some, uh, we actually don't use any very much wide drop. We do use a lot of uh, uh, pivot fertilizer. We put a lot of 32 through the fund, uh, fertigation, and we do put a lot of PSXL on at uh, late season. Um, this is our bean system. Uh, Did you interrupt you guys, but I got a truck parked in front of my entrance door down here where I can't get my door open. And Rainbow's got a guy in front of their door and they need to move. Thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. I'm sure it's fine. But uh, so just some of the things that are kind of jump off the page. Um, we're seeing huge benefit to the stored around beans. Intensify is huge in furrow. Love that. Double inoculate inoculate your beans. Put some on the seeds, put some in furrow. Our nodulations have beat everyone in the county, I know I've checked. I like snoop. Um, <laughs> the other one is, is sugar is a huge one for us. I, I, I'll say that a lot. And then foliar fertilizer again late. We're seeing a huge return to pushing and filling, pushing that seed size. We really want big beans. Um, and lower population, that's another one. But like I said, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking products. I want to talk about how confidence changed our farm. It's huge. The big one's the bottom line. Um, we primarily focus on corn because we are a feedlot. Since 2014, when we first started Conklin, we tried about 80 acres, a few products here and there. Your initial dabble, right? Slowly picked up more, tried a uh, few products across every acre on 2015. It was 2016 when we really started using the products, and 2017 and 18 when we started seeing the really big and fair buck. 2016, we had a horrible hailstorm, kind of about seven inches of rain, about two hours. Um, horrible so our yields sucked. But from 2014 to 2019, we've gone from 245 bushel an acre to 266, and that's the whole farm. At the time, that'd be like 5,000 acres of farm, straight through. That, that's a big deal. We've lowered our nitrogen usage. We used to be probably close to 1 to 1.1 pounds of nitrogen per bushel grown. We're now down to as low as 0.72 on the whole farm average. I have gotten down to as low as 0.4. Um, that's on bean ground, and that was doing some testing. We were really pushing the needle there, but... We're not there all the way, but very consistently 0 0.72, 0 0.82, 0 0.85. Um, but the big one is, is we lowered our cost production. Um, this is our before land cost, uh, $501 an acre and, in 2018 and $586 in uh, 2019. That's before land cost, and that's been custom rates for everything that we've done. If we did it, I, pay, I charge custom rates for planning, everything straight through. That's a profitable level for us. I mean, that's we're very, very successful there. And you can see at the bottom of our, our corn yield, uh, if I average out over three years here, you can see that since we started Conklin, our yields have just skyrocketed, and it's only going to increase. We haven't even started the game. Um, so basically kind of how Conklin changed our farm. Uh, here's a big one. We've got higher goals. Uh, most of you guys have probably up your yield goal in the last five years. Ours have gone to unseemly levels that we never would have thought possible. 300 is an absolute minimum. 325, 350 is seriously under consideration under a pivot. Um, and we're there. Last year we had a horrible windstorm. All of our corn was blown over flat on the 4th of July. It did come back up. We still got 255 bushel the acre, straight through. But we didn't had potential. I think up until that point we had 300 bushel corn and 325 is clearly in the, it's in the range. Straight through. Um, like I said, we've grown more bushels. Uh, it's kind of a problem Compton gave us, but we have to figure out how to market corn now. We never had to. There was a time we fed it all. Bought the neighbors. We don't need more. Um, and that, that's including on bean ground too. 
where we're getting more. We have more balanced fertility. When we first started, when I was a kid, we used to spread manure every three to four years on every acre. We spread tw spread 20 to 30 tons a day. <coughs> Today, and we do that about every three to four years. Now we're closer to 10. Eight to 10 years, and my P and K levels are not dropping significantly. We're managing it, we're keeping it up at a high fertility rate, and it's saving us a huge amount of money on spreading cost. And hopefully over time we'll actually figure out how to sell some of that and make another revenue source. But we don't have to. We're expanding our businesses. You know, we're trying to do some of these other things. We're, like I said, trying to sell some manure, things like that. That's a great option. We're buying more equipment because we can now afford it. And that's going to force us to maybe do some custom farming. And the last one is reducing risk. Uh, I don't know if you guys like the 360 yield center of Greg Sauter. He bashes the one and done nitrogen guy. We used to be. Five years ago, I had 100% of my cost, for all intents and purposes, in the ground by June first. Today, I could take a hail loss and only have 50% in on June 15. We're really pushing all of our fertilities back as far as we can and still being successful. So if I catch that early hailstorm, it's not going to hurt me. And, and that's something that's really big for us. I'm, I'm a big passionate guy that this is a bottom line guy. I, I really could care less if we're going 300 bushel yield, 200 bushel yield, or 100. I want $1,000 an acre profit per acre. That's a goal. We're not there yet, but I think we can. New opportunities. Um, Conklin gave us some things that we didn't think we'd see. Um, we start growing more bushels and you figure out how to be profitable, more options come to the table. A lot of people I know would laugh at me for saying that I'm thinking about growing wheat. But I think today I can actually do it at a profitable level per acre and I can come back behind it with a cover crop, do other things working my system. My neighbors couldn't even come close to making profit on grass. Profit on they call it they call it poverty grass. You know that's that's what they call it. That's poverty grass. Let me get an option. Um, hay crops. It's another option. You grow more bushels here in feedlot. That's the option. We can start growing more hay, and that's an option for us to expand our business, diversify, reduce our risk. Peas and cover crops. Uh, cover crops. I will talk a little bit about a couple products though. Cover crops is probably the biggest potential for us across the whole farm because I can graze it. For some of you guys that might grow cover crops, it's just an added cost. You're trying to improve your soil, improve your health, and I, I'm, I, it's awesome. I'm with you. To me, that's a cash crop. Cover crop is a cash crop. If you want to add value, amplify me. Or amplify it. Amplify is probably the most cost effective on cover crops. We did that. I should put that picture into, our, into this slide, Dennis, but We've tried amplifying on cover crops, and you can go from not being able to graze it over winter to being able to graze it over winter for two bucks an acre. That's one of the biggest home run products we've ever seen. And the opportunity for us to use Compton products as a full year fertilizer, intensify growth, and, and really push it allows us to get more yield, more tons out of it, which will turn into more pounds. We now have the ability to extend our maturity selection. Um, probably when I came home from college in 2015, 103-day uh, corn would be really, really short, and 115-day corn would be really long. Today I plant from 103 to 120, and we're looking at going all the way down to 75. Now that's 75 is quite a ways, but I think we can actually make it profitable today because we know how to grow the system. We know how to increase yield, push profit, and lower our costs. You know, I know it's not going to produce your bushel corn. But 200 bushel corn, and I'm picking it in August, early August, or chopping it maybe in the last week of July, there's opportunity there. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that wasn't an opportunity for us back in, you know, back before conflict. That wouldn't have even been close to profitable. We'd have six standard away. One thing we also done is we spent less time spraying pasture. Grant, my brother, and I, we, that's pretty much our job the summer, spray all the thistles in the pasture. If you want to get a really cheap, easy way to speed up not going back, add it. Plug a Wex into your sprayer. It's not scientific, but Wex kills thistles with any herbicide way better. It's a wetting agent. It works. 
I didn't think we'd ever see it. It's awesome. <clears throat> we have had opportunities to grow an actual business in Conklin. This is a direct sales, you know, multi-level marketing. We're not very good at it yet. We're starting, but then it is an option. And the other one is, is I never thought this would come. I, I don't, they don't let me handle tools at our farm. I, I'm not a grease monkey. I can't handle it. They don't even let me have flyers. I screwed up. <laughs> but, but one day, Rich did give us some fast track grease and said, just try it and see how it works, right? Well, we tried some fast track grease and. Right, 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 Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not very good at sales. Okay. That's a great name for a new grease. <laughs> but, uh, so so we, he gave me some granular grease and we started doing it. Um, I put it in through our, my grease gun. It works. It went through my grease gun quicker, so I thought, I'll just keep using it just for the heck of it. And it's funny, my. My uh, my shop manager, he comes up to me and says, I don't know what you're doing to keep me from breaking all them bearings. Why you don't keep tearing them up all the time, but whatever you're doing, just keep on using it. And so it does work. My feed trucks do spend less time in the shop. Because of it. And one other thing I have added to that, we all are using fast track in the feedlot. If you have sick cattle and you're running through the chute and you're not giving them fast track, I think you're missing a very low hanging fruit. Um, we switched that. Cattle don't spend time possible. Oh, I got a couple of them in here. Um, so I got some questions for you. Um, what's your time worth? A lot of people say, you know, 50, 100 bucks an hour. I don't know. <coughs> the Conklin Pro Ag training is about 20 hours of your time. The time you drive there, listen, do your after time, it's about $20 an hour. Well, we farm 8,000 acres. I guarantee you. I picked up ten dollars an acre profit last week in Carter on every acre. Now for me that's eighty thousand dollars, twenty dollars that's you know about four thousand dollars an hour. Now I know not everyone's farming quite as many acres as I as we are, but even if you're a thousand acre farmer, I know I mean we've been to it four years, five years if you can include my dad we're getting we're pushing twenty pro eggs. With the time that we've been, we go to a lot of them, and I'm still picking up ten dollars an acre every year. For us, I don't know what you're getting paid if you can't afford it, but you need to seriously consider and ask yourself, what are you doing? It's the only way we can get better is learning. The other thing I want to say is, is does anyone have a product out here that can add fifty to hundred dollars net revenue on per acre on my farm? I'm, I'm dead serious. If you do, I'd love to hear about it. That's just, but that's my thing. There isn't one. There's not one product today that can add 50 to $100 an acre. And if it could, in about two years, it will cost 50 to $100 an acre. You know, they'll figure it out. Or corn will go down so much in price so quickly that it won't matter. But a system can do that. This is the Conklin Ag Advantage system. Some people will come up to me and say, yeah, what do you think about boron, Justin? You think boron is important? I'm like, it's awesome. You've got to have it. So is the other six nutrients. So is your NP and K. So is your sulfur, magnesium, calcium. I challenge a lot of people here to go to pro I one and learn the system. There, there's not one product that's going to matter. Yeah, it amplifies it. Low-hanging fruit. Try it. Everyone goes across the field pre plan Use the flex. I like it. But there isn't a... But, but a system can change your farm. It can totally change your farm. Manganese might save your life, but if you don't have that quart of zinc or that pint of zinc in a furrow, it isn't going to be any good. So please, please, go to Prog One and learn the system. I, I'm adamant about that. The third question I ask, and this is probably for most of the distributors in the room. What do you think Conklin is? Most people are probably going to say it's a fertilizer company. Roofing. Okay, roofing. <laughs> I disagree. I think it's an information company. I, we've been going to Conklin for well, now five years. We've been going on six. We clearly believe in the product. We spent over $700,000 in Conklin products last year. And we'll spend more next year. 
it, it's amazing. So it's changed our farm. We've added 20 bushels in yield and and probably $100 in revenue because we've decreased our cost probably 20 bucks an acre straight up. That $4 corn, that's $100 an acre. That's a huge deal for us. Um, but I ask you, is it an information company or fertilizer company? And I'll say information. Conklin has taught us to be better farmers. They've given us the agronomy information. And they'll tell you information. If their product, if there's a better one out there, they'll tell you to go use it. And they mean it. But they give you the information anyway. And and, and I work with I believe that I would work with a company like that. Because they're in it for my best interest. They give it to you for free. Or next to nothing. And if you buy your products, you'll find out they're the best ones out on the market. But you don't have to. They'll give you the information for free, and I love that. The last thing I'll say today is the only fear I have is being average. Um, in farming today, I'm a firm believer that only about 15% of farmers are truly making money when they figure in their true value of their farm ground. They figure their equity and at fair market value, they're only making about, only about 15% of them make money. The other rest of them are either right at average, breaking even on a 10 year basis, or they're losing money. And this is a, you know, this is a commodity world, this is true. The bottom's going to fall out every year, so if you're not getting better, you're going backwards. And that's why I really fear being average. I hope you guys try to go to pro ag training and not be average. That I'll take any questions. What do you do with the manure if you don't spread it? Well, that's his job. His job is supposed to figure out how to spread it. That's my brother. That's his job. His job is to figure out how to give it to somebody else. Um, one of the things we're uh, starting to work on. Um, is we're going to actually start trying to trade for corn stock rent. Good boy. Corn stock rent, we'll grace corn stocks with yearlings or, or calves on it. Uh, you can use corn stocks. Um, I'll let you have manure. If you want to work out a deal, we'll spread it for you because we've got the equipment. It's something we're working on. Like I said, we're not the greatest salesman in the world. We can't even sell our corn. Well, if you went, you know, before you're putting it on the ground every, say, two or three years or something, mm -hmm. out. now it's down to, what, 10 years, you said? It's 10. Well, in that case, you got, well, probably, what, that many years of manure piled up somewhere. Well, not really, because we've been growing pretty fast. Oh. When you add $100 an acre on 7,000 acres, you've got a lot of down payments. Well. <coughs> One day that's going to run out, because I'm not going to be able to buy anymore. I'm going to have to drive a tractor quite a ways, and I do uh, I'm gonna figure out how I'm going to do that then. But we've probably picked up, since I got home, from college, we probably picked up, well, if we include this year, it'll be damn near 3,000 acres in five years. And none of those have been far away. It's it's because of the aggravated system. It's the, you know, it's soccer chemistry. It's it's bottom line deals. And, and guys, we've never used a tissue test until last year. Um, we were really stupid. This, this is my last piece of advice. If you're just thinking about the complex aggravated system, don't write down products to try. You can. Amplify is a great one. Wax is a great one. Guardian, if you're buying nitrogen, it's a great one. But try the whole system. It is taking us, taking us until last year <coughs> to try the whole system, and we had a weather event. Could you imagine what we would have been five years ago? We would have taken a 40-acre stretch or a 10-acre stretch, tried every product, like Conklin tells us, because we found out they're right, they are bullshit us. Try the products and work. We'd be at 300 bushel corn today, pushing higher, lower cost, and really killing it. We're, we're, we're typical farmers. We drug our feet. Oh, let's try a little manganese because we got yellow flag. Oh, well, we're making a trip across. We can try some wax. Last year's first year we did tissue testing and, and tried foliar fertilizer uh, other than just with our fungicide. And we've got a few more steps to go. We've got some things we've learned, some micronutrients that we need to apply different times. If we had done that the first year and worked our way back to profitability, if we, there were some products that didn't work, we might be sitting here saying we're 10 now. Farmers. Because we would, instead of slowly got up to the $180 acre profit, we'd be 150 today. 
that's a challenge I have for you guys. Do you have uh, your own sprayer? Yep. Looking What's good. your, I guess, advice to the to the farmers here on that topic? Uh, I would tell everyone to figure out how to do all of your own work, spraying, planting, you name it. I would tell you to get all of it yourself and learn out how to help your neighbors pay for it if you have extra capacity. Um, sprayers, low hanging fruit. I can tell you right now, you'll pick up probably 15 bucks an acre. No change buying your own sprayer because uh, added herbicide cost. I, I track every cost down to the penny on every acre. The first thing I started when I started doing that when I got home from college, the first thing I said, we're not letting anybody spray our ground ever again. Can't afford it. You can buy your herbicides, your everything so much cheaper from a third party retailer and apply it yourself, you'll pay for that sprayer in no time. Um, or your plant or whatever. And if you do have extra capacity, you're still about worried about getting it, talk to your neighbors. You'll figure out a way to make that. I, and I'm looking at, we're going to have to either upgrade and get a big hay with a 1600 gallon tank on it or get a second sprayer like what we have. I know my vote's the hay because I want more capacity going late, but it's a no brainer. Uh, that's kind of one of those you buy and figure it out later. Even though you have your own sprayer, Justin, you guys do have an area lap up here. Yep. A lot of your yep. And so forth. Yep, we, we have all of our uh, late season applications done with a plane. Oh. Trying to get away from that. I truly believe that the data I've seen is the undercovers are going to win by a mile. But it's really hard to cover 8,000 acres in a short period of time. We're really close. I mean, I can drive to every field in, in an hour. I can see every field of ours in one hour and drive that. So we are close in a pickup. But that being said, full area fertilizer is timing, and getting across a lot of acres is a challenge. But that, that has been one of our biggest challenges with Conley. This system works, but you got to figure out how to work it into your system. I would tell you, prove it first year, and just make the decision, I'm going to try it. I'm going to make it happen. Make that decision, then figure out how. <laughs> On your plans, are you going in for all inches like this? Nope, we're doing strip till right now. But that's probably going to change this year. Uh, especially on being ground, strip till doesn't pay for us to bait it. Fertility does pay. In fact, we're probably going to switch to pro jets this year, put all of our fertilizer in the wings, put our uh, micronutrients right in the trench, um, and any biologicals and things like that, PGRs, in the trench, and then we'll uh, put it. We'd actually go three by two by two. Both sides of the row, three inches over, two inches down, use a conceal. Just stay with precision. Um, that's a low hanging fruit. Everyone tells me it's gonna take too long to stop and reload. I say figure out how. You can't afford not to. And you got everything set up. Like a truck and everything set up to reload it. It's not gonna take long to reload it. Just gotta have a guy. You just gotta have a guy on the, the. The big thing is when you gotta cover three planters. It's a lot of tendering. Yeah. Well, you yeah. have to set, you know, get it set up. Yep. Just that's get it in, get it done. That's what we're doing. That's, that's good, right. Yep. And then, <laughs> you, you should see that works like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have you as an employee. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. The real estate agent in our area really likes us because we're buying houses like crazy. So that way, if we decide that we need to. Get employees we can call and get H two A labor in about an hour. I set up to carry a lot more H two A labor than I currently have employed, but a phone call in about a week, two weeks, I can get more people. It's uh, one of the ways we're combating it. What and kind of guys would you get with the H two A labor? I'm getting, I'm getting South African labor. <laughs> I absolutely. If, I've heard some some bad things. Um, the guy I got first. I he kind of came recommended to us, and he's one of he. I would put it right down right now. He's probably my best employee. And I've had for that one. But he is one of my best employees. And if you ask him or his friends or get the right people, be selective. They're the best employees. Let's give Justin a hand.
Rich come up. Rich has worked with Justin and his dad and Cal and, and his brother here uh, for how many years? Five years? Six uh, years? 2014. Okay. Why don't you, you got anything you want to add? Well, uh, maybe I'll just kind of go back and, and talk a little story about your dad and yeah. Cal. Yeah. Grant's up here. He's going to school, but. Uh, He's got one more year of uh, preloading, and he's got to go back. <laughs> uh, they're very intense. I met Cal at NCGA, and I'm positive at San Antonio, where it's going to be at the end of the month. That's where I met his dad. Took me probably four or five years. Your dad was not an easy sale. And the reason I want to tell you guys that, great customers don't come easy. You remember, you got to get them from somebody else. You know, everybody's buying something from somebody. So they have to make a conscious decision to switch. And at that point, uh, Cal asked me lots of great questions at the booth. I can remember this day where we were, where we were at. The, the thing is, he wants to make sure that his money is being spent wisely. Mm -hmm. and, and so he asked questions, finally got him to a pro ag, and then things switched. We finally came to a meeting. Actually, I gotta give, the first meeting he went to was with Todd Offen back here. Todd is from Juniata, which is near Hastings. Uh, and I know Cal came over there and picked your brain two, three hours at a time. And I, I publicly want to thank you again, Todd, for taking the time for Cal. But, but Cal asked great questions, didn't he? Oh, he did. It was great talking to him. I, I just love meeting people and helping them. So. I'll tell you what, you helped me out too, Todd. Because, you know, I can listen to ProLab 1, and I'm like, all right, I picked one up. That's the, that's the next ten. That's the next twenty dollar an acre. And I'll go tell Dad, and he's like, "You sure you're listening, right?" <laughs> he's tough. I mean, he's tough. And I'm, I'm just as intense as he is, but they tell me I gotta calm it down. But then all of a sudden, about two days later, I'll, I'll call Todd, see what he thinks. And Todd's right, says I'm right, and then we try it, and nothing's came out of our system. That's what's so cool about all the Compton products. Once it goes into the system, once it goes into our like. I, I'm telling you, we, we were the slowest learners. We listened to someone five years in a row. Yeah, try the whole system. You need to fully repeat. You're, you're short. Take a tissue test. It took us five years to get it through our thick heads. And we're finding easy two four dollar investments are going to give us ten, twenty, forty dollar returns. You know, one of the things which you guys you you mentioned at the last meeting, you know, five six years ago, you really didn't care. You didn't take. Pay attention to trace elements. Mm -hmm. Now that's your priority. It's yep. trace elements because they have great fertility. Actually, got too much fertility. Oh yeah. And and uh, I met a lot of guys out here now that have been using broadcast fertilizer for thirty and forty years. They have almost really too much fertility because they've got things out of whack. The trace elements can unleash part of that. Uh, again, it's the agrovanic system. Mm -hmm. It's the information you get. From the uh, Cal, after he was at your program, where you talked about manganese deficiencies. Now, Cal's a, a cattle feeder, so for DEQ, he's got to have soil tests on file to show where the fertility is in every field. Well, he went home that night, called me the next morning, and says, yeah, I'm short. Over the last 10 years, basically, every field is down 30 to 60% in manganese levels. He could go back 10, 12 years and more. Go back further than that. He can go back further. But he said they just went down as we, the more glyphosate we use, the worse our problem was. We were able to uh, help. We're in the process of correcting yep. that with manganese. They're great users of manganese. Thing we use it. And here's the funny thing, Rich. If we had pulled the tissue test a long time ago, we'd add one more pint another another time, and we probably would have had another 10, 20 bushels. Yeah. The, the, the micros can really be a, a huge game changer, like they say. Uh, a year ago, February, is when uh, Cal finally released a lot of the results to me. We met in Kearney. Is it Joy's now? Is that what yep. you call it? At the uh, Holiday Inn there. And we had lunch, and he said, Here's what our program's doing, just like you mm -hmm. shared here. We've gone from 240 to 267. Mm -hmm. Last year, yeah, we were down 253. Part right. of the rest of the story is that, uh, is though you lost, what, 10 to 28% because of the weather event, is what the yeah, insurance company Yeah, our drop insurance was just straight through. Lowest yield loss was 10, most was up to 25, 30. So you would have probably exceeded the 280 average. Their goal is in the next few years is to be at that 300 plus bushel. And I think these guys, have, they've got a blueprint, they've got a plan. It just isn't a wish list. They're, they're doing that. But I know Cal, uh, a year ago, last fall, when you guys had to hit the 267 average, I guess, here they're halfway through harvest. 
and he texts me. Our average is 267. I think was, I, I might be off a bushel or something here. It's 267.3 with a little over 3,000 acres harvest. They knew day to, they know day to day basically what your yields are because everything goes across your scale. I'll put, I'll put our data up against anybody. It just, it, it, so I mean, when they share that information, I mean, how many farmers do you know that really know what their yield average is even at the end of the year? Yeah. And I don't mean that as a slam, but a, I want to use it as a, a way to really put things in perspective of how mm -hmm. meticulous you guys are on things. And, and I look at cost. <clears throat> we cared about budgets. The profit. Profit matters. We're under six hundred dollars before land cost. The highest land cost in the county that I've ever heard is three hundred and twenty bushel or twenty twenty bucks an acre. That's and that's how dangerous. He ain't farming today. So you're under three hundred. We're under nine hundred dollars an acre revenue and we're producing two hundred and fifty five at worst last year plus a insurance check probably what you did that one probably what 30 bucks an acre average 20 30 bucks, bucks. 20 30 bucks an acre average insurance check on top of the fact that we were making money straight through so everyone had a chance to put on corn this year i think that's pretty easy and that's with a 300 bushel yield goal the last one was 275 and we didn't quite shoot high enough everything under the pivot was over that on our field too it was pushing through I guess I'll, I'll just kind of close with uh, Kel's become a great friend, so is Justin and Graham. Uh, the thing is, is go out, when you guys go out there and you're talking to people, remember, uh, don't look at what you might make, look at what you can help your new friend make. And when, when you take that perspective, it's amazing the, the, when you sit down with a guy and say, hey, why are you doing this? And the guy goes, well, they're telling the other competitors for saying, and, and I think a lot of times, <clears throat> The local feed and see the guy that's selling the program doesn't realize what he's doing either education when you talked about education i think i didn't realize that till a few years ago myself that is our first thing that's really on top of the plate when we can show a farmer that he can save a hundred bucks an acre on fertility i was sitting with a farmer yesterday back in, near my hometown if his phosphorus levels are over a hundred parts per million of P1. That's his average on several fields. And, and I said, well, what are you going to do this year? He said, well, I'm going to spread some more dry fertilizer. And I go, why? Well, my, my local feed and seed says I need to invest that to maintain a crop. I said, I, I says, why don't you only do a few acres with a broadcast and see what the difference is. Uh, Dan, can you imagine he needs 30 bushels an acre at three and a half dollar corn to pay for that dry program. He raises 240, 50 bushel corn under irrigation. Good corn. I mean, he's a great farmer. But I know he could drop his yields 15, 20 bushels an acre, cut that out, and still have return on investment. Guys, we need to go out there and educate our customers and help them understand what's out there. Todd, I see you shaking your head. I, I look at your slides that you showed over the last 12 years where your fertility is maintained you ain't spreading that you're saving that 70 to 100 bucks an acre your uh that softer chemistry is helping your uh ground get more balanced you know your phs have come up without lining uh, it's just neat to see what's happened the guys that trust that aggravated system excuse me my voice is getting out so i'll, I'll put right. their down guys thanks thanks yeah. richard these guys are so <laughs> well, I'm going to have Todd Hoffman come up and share some of the things since he's here tonight. Uh, but one of the things I, I want to say right up front, Todd and I just worked on this yesterday. And come on up, Todd. And we left out some things, and so we're going to kind of be correcting some things as we go along. I've, I've kind of thrown them into this presentation to give you a kind of a preview. And we've got Todd doing a series of meetings. We'll be in Wahoo on the 20th. That's uh, two weeks from tonight. We'll be in, uh, Todd and I'll be in uh, Carroll, Iowa, which is, uh, what, two and a half hours from here, Sam? Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's north and west of Des Moines. And then we're going to be going from there over to Polo, Illinois, which is north central Illinois. There's a flyer over here if you want to pick one up when you, before you leave. It shows all the dates and locations where we're going to be. And we're going to go from there to a place called Hersher, Illinois, just south of Chicago. The next uh, evening, that evening will be in... Uh, a place called La Crosse, Indiana, 
with an agronomist by the name of Brad Ropey over there, and then we're going to go from there to Coldwater, Michigan, southern part of Michigan, with Skip and Mickey Hoig, and then we'll be down to Grayville, Indiana, and then we're meeting with, I think, on Friday morning with a group of Beck sea dealers that want to have Todd share with him what he's been seeing. But um, I've just thrown a few slides in here that Todd and I worked on, and again, we've got some massaging to do yet. One of the things that we didn't include in here is the, the figures that we're going to show you is fertility only. And I'll let Todd tell you more of it. So it doesn't include any land, machinery, taxes, labor, seed. It's strictly his fertility program in total. And it, he's been using the Agarana system since 2007. And it's thanks to Kenny Hilton making a cold call, getting him to use some Amplified E, right? That was exactly right. And uh, so we're going to go through this. Now, a couple of things we, you said we left out, and I didn't get corrected here. Wax. Wax and Guardian. Wax goes with every acre. Pre-plant, pre-emerge, core per acre, and then he also uses the Guardian on any nitrogen applications. And I don't have those figures figure in here. So the numbers that you'll see here are a little inflated because those figures aren't included. I'm going to get that correct before we do the series of meetings. But Ty, let's uh, go through here. At planting, I'll flip through it. You go ahead and talk about each of the inputs. Yeah, Amplify L. We started with Amplify D, graduated to Amplify L. Guys, you got a seedsman, or you got your own seed treater. I highly recommend that you use Amplify L. Get that coating of every seed. Uh, we've done consistent tests now since probably 2012, and this is very important. Get that seed up and out of the ground. If we're, spe if we're spending $350 a bag on every seed, and every seed costs 0 .003 cents per seed, and we put faith in that seed, why are we treating it like it's a piece of dog food? We've got to take care of it. We've got to take care of it from the ground up. And guys, that's why ProAg is so important because we have to start focusing on down here first. Everything in the furrow, and we build out. We want to ban and put everything in there. We want to empower the furrow, and that's what Amplify does. Our, our, our pure grade plant food, and that's why I love to call it. I don't like to call it starter because I just met with a guy today. He says, Yeah, we put. Six to seven gallon of 1034O on our seed. And yeah, we're just using a totally tubular. I said, have you ever tested that? No, we just take the cost word for it. <coughs> well, I go, you better start testing it because we had one of my close neighbors test some a couple of years ago and it was 1024O. The soil content was 90. And he lost probably two to 3,000 population. That's what I love about our pure fertilizer. <coughs> We've been using it for several years. This is just our blend that we use. This year we're probably going to use 250 19.3S. So it's a great value. So remember that in your first nine week of corn plant season, you want to have everything available in that first nine weeks. Very, very critical. So that's why we fit the pro the content program fits so nice. There's the the cute the feast manganese and furrow, the zinc. As Justin said, zinc is a game changer, guys. Get it in your furrow, and, and here's what you want to look at, and you'll learn a pro-ag coming up on Monday and Tuesday if you go to Lincoln. Pay attention to detail. If you work with an agronomist, your P1 level should be 16 to 26. Your P2 level should be 25 to 60. Now, I just met with one of my close friends today, and he was working with Servitech Labs, which I like Servitech Labs, but I'm looking at the soil test, and I'm going, okay, is this P1 and P2 combined? Or is this just P2? Well, they were 88. Well, when your P2 level gets over 60, your zinc is tied up by your phos. Remember that. Very important. I'm sure you've seen that. Time and time I again. I don't have a P2 under 60. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's using manure. But for you guys that, that have used manure, or let's say you have high phos levels, if your P1 level is 16, 17, that's awesome. But your P2 levels are over 60. You've got to put our zinc product in the furrow to help your zinc become available. And then another key is that with the Conklin system, the closer you get your, your soil to pH, you will release some of that stuff in the, out of the soil, especially your P2 level, because that's your reserve. Cento's a huge game changer. We've been doing a pint. We, we're now going to probably go to a quart in the furrow. I love the product. I think it, causes, it stirs up great microbial activity in the furrow. Intensify, awesome product. Our foliar program, pretty simple. And we do this pretty much on every acre, but we do do tissue testing. 
Tissue testing is very important. Tissue testing is the number one thing, as Justin talked about on our farm. We love, I love doing tissue testing. I'll even go out to my neighbor's fields and I'll say, hey, can I do some tissue testing for you to see what your hidden hunger is? We've got to start thinking about it that way, guys. If you've got a neighbor you're working with, Midwest Labs does such a wonderful job with tissue testing. Go out and do tissue testing the right way, and they teach that at ProAg also how to do tissue testing in the book that you will receive. Probably our biggest game changer uh, is Feast XL, as Justin talked about too, and one, one and a half gallon per acre uh, with a fungicide or with an insecticide. A very important key tool of an airplane, especially at light blister stage, very critical. One thing we've seen with this product is consistency. I had one of my close neighbors, he said, I said, if you don't do anything else this year, if you're not going to do anything else, and he did use Amplify, he said, I want you to do an aerial application of Feast XL on a gallon per acre on your field. He agreed to do it. Aerospray went out there, they ran the combine through the field, he was running the Case IH combine with the AMS system on it. His son was running the combine, they got to the 40 acre part of the field where they left a strip. And I, I, I recommend that. Do testing with these products. Leave 20 acres. Leave, I, I do 60 acres, but leave less because you're going to be impressed with that 60 acres. <laughs> That's the most important thing. But he left 40 acres in that field. His son called him on the phone. He goes, oh my goodness, this is the best corn we've ever had, and it's green. So he called his agronomist out there, and his agronomist is walking to the field, and he said, you could see right down the row where that was, where he had scraped that. And that's all he used was feast that cell. He didn't use any uh, insecticide or, or uh, fungicide with it. Well, in 2000, uh, actually, we should, that should be 2018, because 2019 we had some, some wind like Justin talked about. But we had really good yields uh, in 2019 also uh, with, with hail and windstorms. But this was uh, actually on one of my, one of my close uh, landlord's fields that we did this replication on. And uh, we left a uh, part in the field where we didn't do anything. We just 15 inch corn, we didn't put anything in the furrow, no foliar application, and we came back and did the other, the rest of the field. And I tell you what, it was outstanding what happened when, when you get everything underneath that crop. And so the control average 255, and we in, in increased it by 47 bushel, and of course the profit 164.50, but of course, we got to have the Lex and the other stuff in there yet, but in the Guardian. But one thing I can say is that focus on getting everything in the furrow first. Take care of the furrow and work out from there. It's just like what Rich was talking about broadcast in 1152 Don't do it. Try to band it if you have to band it, but I would recommend using Conklin uh, in row starter fertilizer to help with your NPK and S. Sulfur. Sulfur is a game changer. So, like I said, we're still working on it. Okay, this. so this number shouldn't be 99 it should yeah. be $86 at right. a net per acre. Yeah. Uh, and so this number will be off, too. Well, we'll get yeah. that corrected then for his other programs. But significant, uh, significant on 800 acres of corn. And that's yeah. without uh, adding another trip. That's without really adding another trip, right? You can make that without, yep. so yeah. you can do it. Yep. Let's, let's look at the soybean program, Todd. Yeah, efficiency is the key, guys. One thing you want to remember this year, and one thing they'll talk about at Pro Ag if you haven't been there yet, is efficient agronomy. We have to be efficient in everything we do. And if we can put these products on a one foliar feeding application at smaller amounts that make them work, foliar feeding is a game changer for you. But I can't stress enough, you've got to have everything here first beginning. You've got to have a good soil test, you've got to have good pH, you got to have everything fixed before you go out, but it will, like it showed us for 12 years, it will help our soil, get our soil in condition, and that's what we're seeing on our farm. So get everything in the furrow and work out from there. <coughs> soybeans, uh, magnified, double inoculated soybeans, just to talk about that. Uh, soil excito in the furrow, feast chelated calcium, that's a huge game changer. Uh, very inexpensive, efficient product right here that can pick up some major bushels uh, and bigger beans like Justin talked about. Potassium, we, and we'll talk about that on foliar, but potassium is probably the number one thing that our plants need, and that's why we use 318-18. As little as two quarts per acre, we've seen some great results with that. 
Um, so even though you're getting a little bit of plant food, Kenny Dane will talk about that pro ag, a little bit of plant food is great when you have all the other things working for you. So zinc, zinc, boron, great, uh, it's a huge game changer uh, for foliar soybeans. Um, I was talking to my neighbor today, he had his, his, his surfactant tissue test, they didn't test for boron, they didn't test for copper, they didn't test for iron, they didn't test for manganese. <laughs> So I said, that's an incomplete source. <coughs> and I said, why did they not do that? And why did they not test for your P2? Why did they put your P1 and P2 together? Well, that costs more. I said, you need Midwest Labs, you need Compton right now. Because we can do that for 22 bucks. So Some of you guys have heard yeah. Corey Orbeliner, he talks about there's a large group of agronomists that work across the state of South Dakota and North Dakota where he works, and, and uh, they also do not run full soil yeah. tests. And, and so he asked a guy that worked for him, he says, well, why do you guys not run full soil tests? Well, he says, well, if we do that, he says, people are going to ask us questions that we can't answer. Yeah, that's, right. Right. That's, right. that's not a good reason for a complete soil test, okay, guys? I was uh, a, find a different agronomist or get to proact. I was at a uh, chemical pesticide training meeting the other day and they asked a question in the room about potassium, and none of the farmers could answer it. I stood up and I said, do you know what potassium is? It's an electrical conductor. It's what flows the nutrients into the plant. And the, the, the teacher at the extension was up there going, that's good, did I know that? You know? <laughs> and I go, yeah, you know, that, you know, it's just like the nitrogen is the fuel. And we've got to remember, potassium is the number one breaking link in the chain, guys. Write this down. Make sure you have correct potassium, amounts of potassium in your soil. And make sure you're watching your magnesium-potassium ratios. And we'll talk about that at ProAg. The ratio is there. You could, your t soil test, test won't, maybe won't show that you're short on potassium, but you might be overwhelmed with magnesium that's overwhelming your potassium. So, yeah. watch that. Did you use some, did you use some Guardian on your soybeans too? No, we did not. So no. there wouldn't be a Guardian, just be. No, the, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, no, we would <laughs> So anyway, here's, here's what we're, we'll have this up to date, but, and these, uh, there's his numbers on his soybeans. Control of 63 versus 86. So here's something to really think about going through these figures. Guys, what's, what's seed cost? $100 an acre. How much is the cost per bushel? 25 or 40 cents a bushel on 250 bushel corn. It's 40 cents a bushel. What does your nitrogen cost for your corn a, a cost per bushel? Usually, probably, if you're putting on liquid, probably 65 to $70 an acre. Figure that down to the cost per bushel. Take that divided by your yield goal or what your actual yield goal was. I bet you'll come up with about 25, 30 cents. So around there per bushel. Start breaking stuff down at per bushel cost. Justin hit it on the head when we start breaking stuff down at per bushel cost, we start to think different. We start to change our mindset and have a little bit better analytics because it will help us market our grain better when we have a cost per bushel. Because we're looking at it going, if I can gain 25 cents a bushel on my 250 bushel corn this year, that's profit. But we got to start thinking outside the box and focus on that on a cost per bushel basis. And that's good. So you can relate these numbers to cost per bushel. But uh, this was, once again, this was 2018 where we had new yields on soybeans. So. so this number, Wex was put on there so that we should be another four and a half bucks basically right. higher on this number. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, that's going to be a little less. It's yeah. going to be between the corn and the, and the soybeans, once we include the WEX and the Guardian, this is going to be down from 220000 yeah. to 200000 yeah. The 200000 is is basically the fertility program that was the response from using that program. Yeah, and once again, that's without the nitrogen cost in there, seed cost, uh, you know, all the other yeah. costs. But I will say this about the Conklin program. When I first started on, when Kenny brought that Amplified E by, I thought, oh, what is this? You know, is it moon dust or whatever, you know? And it wasn't. It turned out to be a game changer. I, was, I haven't shared Dennis this story yet, the short one. But in 1990, and you probably read the paper last night, in 1990, or actually in 2004, before you came by, we were like, Going, what are we going to do? We're putting 1034 over the furrow, we're losing stand, we're planting 26,000 plants on 36 inch corn, we ended up with 23, we just, we didn't know any better. We didn't know any better, and then Conklin came along, 
with their whole program and changed that. Amplify changed it. The indoor plant food changed it. The foliar system changed it. And then pretty soon we started figuring it out. There's something here because when we started in 2004, and I can actually show you the soil test. I was looking at them today. And the one I showed you from 2007, we had a pH of 5.3. That's totally toxic. Totally toxic. And our, our, our organic batters on our farm in southwestern Nebraska barely get over 2.8 if we're lucky. At that time, we had like 1.5. And our CECs were down to 9 and 10. Probably a lot like what Jerry Cox had down there. But now they're 14, 15, 16. Our organic matters are 2.8 to 3.3. Our soil pHs are 6.6 .6 to 7. We're right in that sweet spot. And the only thing we changed, we have never put manure on which I'm glad you have. Can I go get some manure from you? Sure. Uh, you trust me. You trust me. Yeah. It's free. I know where you live. <laughs> That's fine. I'll provide the loader. <laughs> uh, anyway, we never put manure on, so when, but here's one thing that I want to, here's the caveat about all this. Guys, if the co-op's telling you to put 1152 on your field broadcast, you, I just checked it out today with my neighbor. He put on 150 pounds of 1152. That's 300 pounds. <clears throat> Because it's 52%. Guess what that cost you? A lot. $99 an acre to apply that. Broadcast. So we got to stop thinking about 36 inches for 30, or even 15. We got to start thinking about nine. We got to start here. That's where it starts. We got to have enough power. We got to empower that ground for nine weeks. We got to be able to come back and throw your feet back crop. Because we have to start both your feeding because it's just efficient. It's an efficient way to apply micronutrients and our plant food hydroponic high powered pure food grade fertilizer. So that's basically all I have for you tonight. So I, I I challenge you guys to get to Pro Ag One because Monday and Tuesday because you're gonna hear from agronomists, great agronomists, right? Yep. With great real life stories from all over the country. And it's going to open your mind up. And I, I had two friends there last week, and I just met with one today, and he goes, you know, I've never been to a meeting like that where they've talked. Everything was real to me. Everything just, I, it woke me up. Because I've been doing so much stuff, I think I can go home and probably save 10, 15, 20 bucks an acre. And guys, it ain't about 300 bushel corn or 400 bushel corn. It's about efficiency. We have to start being more efficient. If you can save 25 to 30 dollars this year, and you can increase your yield by, let's just say 10 percent. You know, I call it the profitability yield challenge, and that's what we're going to do on our farm again. We're going to have a profitability yield challenge. We're going to try to challenge our neighbors. You're doing what you're doing. We're doing what we're doing. I bet we can spend less and get more, get more out of our soil. We need to start releasing more out of our soil because it's there, guys. We have to release it, and these products release it because they're neutral pH. Let's give Todd a hand. Folks <laughs> into Todd's programs that we're doing uh, in all those different places, and take some of the flyers before you leave tonight. One of the things both of these guys talked a lot about is uh, what we've put together into a program called the 80 Acre Challenge. You know, one of the things I've heard both these guys say is they could go back and do it over. What they do is not, you know, try a product here and a product there and try a little of this, a little of that, experiment here and there. They would take the system as prescribed and take 40 or 80 or 120 acres and they would put the full system in there and compare it to what they're doing on the rest of their acres. It'll, it, it's a, it is, as they would call it, a game changer. That combined with the knowledge that you get of Pro Egg One gives you the ability to do that. Now, Jerry Cox would tell you, and he's been using the program for a long time, he would tell you that it took him three years of really kind of figuring it all out, getting all the pieces put together. But I, I guarantee you, if you'll do the 8 acre challenge, and if you have filled out one of the registration sheets or one of the other sheets that were passed around, jot down on there that you want the 8 acre challenge and make sure I can read your, your, your email, and I'll be glad to email it to you. But just make sure, or give me a business card or something, but I'll be glad to send you it. It's about a five-page document, but it basically outlines what we would encourage you to do as an 8 year challenge to compare your conventional program or what you've been doing before historically to the Conklin Agri-Rams program. But people, when they ask me, they say, well, what has Conklin got that's different than anybody else? I tell them, Look, well, number one, we've got some unique products and some proprietary products. There's no place else in the country you can buy an Amplify D. 
There's no place else you can get Guardian. There's no place else that manufactures the Kip Colors products. Uh, Wex is a unique product that we have the proprietary rights to. Uh, premium, but we've got premier industry leading crop production strains. The Pro Ag one you've heard repeated over and over is really the game changer for people because it opens your eyes at, to the system uh, of doing things different. Uh, and some of them are maybe counterintuitive in a lot of cases. But third is, I think, a really important. Because of the first two, we've put together a network of people, coast to coast, that I can call anytime. And I think the perfect example of that was I was out at, at uh, Imperial Nebraska with Stan doing a meeting out there with Murray Overlander. And just before we got started to do the meeting, one of my guys, in fact, one of Kenny's guys, Bob Waldemann, comes up to me and says, hey, Danny, he says, I just got a call from a farmer that was referred to me by Paul Shafford out of, in Enola. And this guy happened to farm rice in Alabama. He wanted to know which of our products he should be using on his rice. And I thought, he's talking to the wrong guy. <laughs> he must be he must be thinking, I know something about that. And I said, boy, I said, I don't know, but I said, I think I can find out. And I sent two text messages out to two guys I thought would know. And within 15 minutes, I had a response back from one of these guys. It happened to be Kip Colors, and he happened to be in Brazil at the time. And he responded immediately and told me exactly what the guy should be using. We've got this network of people that are so generous, like Justin and Todd, with sharing <coughs> what they've experienced and what they've seen. And, you know, they'll share tips, techniques, advice, anything that you want. They don't really have any secrets. Denny Damon does our pro eggs, has put together that program over the years, has done it for I don't know how many years. He's uniquely... Uh, talented in doing that. Now, I would tell you that this year, and what you'll experience on Monday if you come to Lincoln for the Pro-Ag, Denny won't be there. His wife has been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. He's where he should be, helping her get through uh, all of her treatments and everything. We've got a team of agronomists, so a number of you guys have been to the programs that we've had. Have, I've got heard nothing but great response. Uh, they're presenting his material. There are some short video clips where Denny explains some concepts uh, that he's uniquely capable of doing. And the other thing is, if you haven't gotten a copy of the, the DVD entitled The Three, Breaking Through a Bush of Corneal Barrier, Jerry Cox explains it's all the things he's done and changing his program to increase his farm average yields by over 100 bushel an acre. We've got copies of that here tonight, or if you would rather, I can send you a link and you can basically watch it online. Uh, here's the upcoming Pro Ag One programs. We've got one in Lincoln on Monday and Tuesday. We've got one in Fargo, North Dakota, the 13th and 14th in Lincoln, just too close to home for you. Uh, Ankeny, Iowa is coming up here in mid, uh, mid-February, mid and then we've got Kansas City, Missouri. That's the very last program we'll have this year is Kansas City, Missouri, 12th and 13th. There's, a, there's another one in Pennsylvania someplace I think I left off there, and a couple others, but they're a lot further away. So anyway, these are the programs coming up, and so here's a couple of websites for you. We list all of our meetings, like the meetings I've talked about with Todd on yieldchampions.com, and then the 300bushelcorn.info is a collection of about 75 different interviews with different guys on their programs or what they're doing. Most of these clips are short, five, 10 minutes. There's a few of them that are longer programs. We'll be posting this program probably there. Uh, in fact, it's if you use our NextCloud app, uh, a lot of these programs are there and available that you can share with somebody by clicking a button and sending it to them as a link. So uh, those are things going on. So. We're here. We'll stick around if you've got questions, but thanks for coming out tonight. We really appreciate the crowd and appreciate Justin and Todd for sharing with us. Let's give them a hand.